After months of speculation and eight Commanders mock drafts, it all comes down to this, Commanders fans. My final Commanders mock draft of the 2024 draft season one day before the Commanders take their next quarterback of the future, number two overall in the 2024 NFL Draft. Can't wait to share with you guys. Got multiple trades in this final mock draft for you guys. It's going to be a good one. The best one I've done to this point in draft season, so make sure you don't go anywhere. But before we get into today's mock draft, make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already, because tomorrow night we're going to be going live right here on the Commander's Report. And we're going to be uh, reacting live to Roger Goodell, uh, letting us know who the next franchise quarterback of the Washington Commanders is is going to be number two overall. And I suspect this, the Commanders are going to be trading back up into round one. So it's going to be a very eventful and historic day for the Washington Commanders football franchise. So make sure you click that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, and then also make sure you catch me and Tom Downey. We're going to be going live about two hours before the 2024 NFL Draft even opens to get you guys ready. So make sure you click that subscribe button and join the Chat Sports family on the main Chat Sports YouTube channel. We're going to be going live for every single pick, all seven rounds, all three days, live coverage and instant analysis to every single pick. So make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already. So let's get going here with my first pick of this final mock draft. And I'm not changing my quarterback pick now. And it's going to be Jaden Daniels out of LSU. Here's my thing, man. I think Jaden Daniels brings the best combination outside of Caleb Williams, who's going number one to the Chicago Bears, out of the quarterbacks that are going to be available at number two. Daniels gives me the best combination of superstar upside. Okay, I've compared Lamar, uh, uh, Jaden Daniels to Lamar Jackson. Okay, so he's a taller version of Lamar Jackson, who's won two MVPs in the last half decade in the National Football League. But he also brings a really nice NFL ready skill set with the really good pocket mechanics, with the good footwork, with really good balance in the pocket and really clean throwing mechanics, good accuracy and touch down the field and good mental processing. I don't necessarily trust Drake May in terms of his NFL readiness as much as I trust Jaden Daniels at this point in the process. So give me Jaden Daniels, number two. And now let's trade up, all right? Because we know that Jaden Daniels is my pick at number two. I've been talking about my reasons why here on the channel for weeks at this point. But now let's make this trade up and let's really get spicy here in this final mock draft where we're going to trade up to number 16 overall with the Seattle Seahawks. I've had this idea in my brain for a while here. I even put it in my draft trade ideas video here. Pick number 36 and pick number 40. Two high second round picks in exchange for a mid first round pick. Seattle needs a lot of help on the interior of the offensive line. I'm not sure if they'd take a guard at number 16, but I know that they would take one at the early portions in round two. Plus, they get an additional pick here by trading down. So I think this works out for both sides. The Commanders and Seahawks already have a trading history, trading Sam Howell to the Seahawks earlier this offseason. So obviously, those two front offices are going to be in communication. And with this number 16 pick, I'm going to take Leatu Latu, UCLA edge rusher, because I think he's ready to be a number one edge rusher in the NFL on day one. He has a dominant cross chop move, which is the most dominant pass rushing move in the game of football today. You see guys like Nick Bosa, TJ Watt, Joey Bosa, the best pass rushers on the planet have mastered this move. And really only like eight guys can do it because it takes a certain amount of athleticism, uh, a balance, power, and bend, and just overall athleticism. And Latu brings that to the table. Now, he does have a little bit of an issue with his neck. He medically retired a couple of years back, but he came back and lit the college football world on fire these past two years. He's a big body. He can fit in this 4-3 scheme that Dan Quinn Jr. and Joe Witt Jr. are going to be playing here in Washington. And I love the fit between Leatu Latu and the Washington Commanders. And I think that this is a really good offensive tackle class. So I'm going to say you can probably get a tackle later in this draft class, but we'll get to that in a second. Now pick your poison here. If you're going to if you're going to trade up into round 1, all right? So obviously you're going to take a quarterback at number 2, but if you're going to trade back up into round 1, what position would you target? Offensive tackle or edge rusher? Let me know down there in the comment section for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time, but let me know which position you're targeting in round 1. So now let's trade up again here, all right? Because you got the draft capital. You got three big needs in quarterback 
edge rusher, and offensive tackle. You've already taken care of two of those needs in quarterback and edge rusher. Now you have three third-round picks and no second-round picks, but you still need a left tackle. So I'm going to package two of your first third-round picks this year, number 67 and 78. I'm going to send that to New York, a team that is definitely looking for additional draft picks. They have lots of team needs to fill out this year. And in, in exchange, they're going to give the Washington Commanders the number 47 overall pick. And with this pick here, I'm going to take Patrick Paul out of Houston. I think at this point, Jordan Morgan will probably be off the board. And when it comes to guys that I think are ready to be left tackles in the National Football League, at this point in the draft, I think Patrick Paul will probably be the top guy on my board at that point. Now, Paul is a little bit of a project, but Washington is a rebuilding team. They can afford to give Paul a year to kind of develop, and he has all the tools that you look for, the size, the athleticism, the foot speed, the arm length, the hand size. He's got it all, man. And he has a pretty darn good track record in terms of production there with Houston as a pass protector. They ran an air raid system there in Houston, and he did a pretty darn good job. Didn't allow a sack this past year. Uh, now, at the Senior Bowl, he definitely got exposed by some of like the true top-of-the-top kind of guys in this year's class, and I do think he's going to take his lumps early on in his career, but I think he has the physical profile to be a franchise left tackle, and I, and I trust, I have to trust Washington to develop him uh, heading into the early years of his NFL career and that he can make it as the left tackle of the Washington Commanders. Now coming up here, I'm going to be trading down in round three to get more picks on day three of the NFL draft. I'll show you my trade down idea here in just a couple of seconds. But before we get into that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor at Game Time, which is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater in your area. No matter what event you want to go to, if you want to go to a music festival or a concert or a sporting event, the NHL playoffs are going on right now, NBA playoffs are going on right now, baseball just got going. Uh, it, there's a bunch of great stuff to go out and see, and Game Time is the number one ticketing app in the United States of America for a reason. Very good stuff from Game Time. Super easy to use interface, and they have the lowest price guarantee and flash deals right before Game Time. So if you're someone like me, guys, likes to get tickets last minute, Game Time rewards you for that behavior by giving you flash deals, which drives the already guaranteed lowest prices down even further. So if you love saving money, you love going to these events, you can go to Game Time right now, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS. That's one word, all caps. It's right down there in the bottom right of your screen uh, for, for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. So here's my trade down idea because you use your first two third round picks to trade back into round two. And I want to trade down a little bit here and get a couple of fourth round picks to add to the arsenal here. So we're going to trade out of round three uh, at pick, uh, pick number 100. And we're going to pick up the Jets two fourth rounders here at 111th and 134th overall respectively. So after this move, pick number 111, let's get a tight end here. One of my favorite receiving threat tight ends in this class, Ben Sinnott out of Kansas State. Now, Sinnott might actually go a little bit earlier than this. And by the way, it's Sinnott with two Ts, just in case you're wondering, that's, that's on me for that typo there. But Sinnott, really, really special mover at the tight end position, all right? For a guy his size, you don't see guys like him move the way that he does in the short areas. Like, he's got really good agility for a guy his size. He's got the size to be an inline blocker and be a really good uh, true inline tight end. And having a versatile weapon like this that can be a good blocker along with a really dynamic receiving threat is something I want to add to this offense. And I think Sinnott is definitely the type of receiving threat that I want learning a year from under Zach Ertz here in Washington. Then also in round four, number 134. This is one of my favorite sleepers in the draft this year. Malik Mustafa out of Wake Forest is awesome, all right? I have him ranked 
inside my top three safeties, period, in this entire draft class, and I think he's going to be a really good player. He's got a really good build. He can play a true, strong safety role, which is what he would be asked to do in the future here if Jeremy Chin isn't the long-term answer here in Washington. But right away, he's going to be somebody that's going to be a rotational piece as a dimebacker, and he might even beat out Quan Martin for the starting slot cornerback role. Martin, I'm not sure if he's a great fit for what uh, uh, for what Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. want to do schematically. Uh, I think he was more of a fit for the Fangio style off coverage safety type of role uh, that that last the last regime got him to get. So I'm not sure if Quan Martin is a true fit anymore. But I love Malik Mustafa's fit here in the slot. He's a bigger body. He blows up screens. He blows up outside runs. Really good player overall. And I think that he's going to be a really good pro right away. And if you're getting a guy like this in round four. That's an absolute steal. Now make sure you click that thumbs up icon if you haven't already. If you are as pumped for the NFL draft as I am, and we are here at the Commander Support, if you click that thumbs up icon, it really does help us out. And the more you click that thumbs up icon on our videos, the more YouTube will recommend them. So really do appreciate all of your support. Then in round five, pick number 139, I'm going to go with Zach Zinter, off interior offensive lineman out of Michigan. Now Zinter didn't, uh, have that gruesome leg fracture that he had against Ohio State at the end of last season, he'd probably be a round two pick. He might be the number one guard in this class. That is how good of a football player Zach Zinter is, but he's not going to be able to play his first season in the NFL. And, you know, uh, coming off of that gruesome injury, you have to wonder if he's ever going to be the same guy coming back in 2025. So there is risk involved here with Zinter. But I think this is a risk the commanders can take because, I mean, they're a rebuilding football club. They don't need to fill this role necessarily in year one of this new regime. You can head into 2025 with your bona fide, or at least what you're hoping is going to be your bona fide left guard in Zach Zinter. You have Sam Cosme at right guard. Hopefully Tyler Biotich has a good year this year. And hopefully Patrick Paul is doing a really good job at left tackle. And you can kind of figure out the other tackle spot heading into next offseason. And you're in a pretty darn good spot at least a lot better than where you were at the beginning of this offseason. So I love the value of Zinter here getting a true potential all-pro guard in round five. I think is absolutely worth the risk. Then also in round five, I'm going to go with one of my sleeper picks here, Jalen Coker out of Holy Cross. Big receiver that can move. Uh, he's got really good instincts out in space as well. So I love the potential with Jalen Coker. And we know that this commander's wide receiver core, they need size. The biggest wide receiver in this room right now is Terry McLaurin, and he's just six foot tall. Now, six foot tall isn't necessarily tiny, but it's definitely not like a true X receiver or true red zone threat in terms of the, like the pure 50-50 ball ability. Jalen Coker can be that guy. He's 6'3", he moves really well, he could be a potential starter at the X position, and that could uh, open things up for Terry McLaurin to play in the slot a little bit, to play outside in the Z position. You could really get creative with Terry McLaurin, who's one of the best route runners and overall receivers in the game today, if Jalen Coker ends up working out for you in the long run as your big X receiver. Then in round seven, if PFF is going to let this guy fall to round seven like they do, that currently have him ranked 225th on their big board, which is a crime. Elijah Jones out of Boston College. I love this kid, man, especially for the value. Yes, he's undersized. But he had the number one man coverage grade out of any quarter in this class, period, uh, according to Pro Football Focus last year. And for some reason, th that same publication is putting them 225th on their big board. I don't understand it. He's a ball hawk. He's, he's really good at playing the football in man coverage. And what does Washington want to do? They want to play a lot of man coverage, and, and they want guys that are going to be aggressive like Elijah Jones out of Boston College. So I love this fit here. If Pro Football Focus wants to put him down the totem pole that much, fine. I'm going to take advantage of that and take him in round seven. So here's my final commander's mock draft haul here. Uh, Jaden Daniels at number two overall, trading back up into round one for a number one edge rusher in Leatu Latu. Hopefully you get your left tackle of the future and Patrick Paul, a little bit of a risk, uh, but I think it's worth it, and he's a great fit for this team. Ben Sinnott, tight end out of Kansas State. Uh, really love his ability to catch and block 
uh, one of the more well-rounded tight ends in this class. Malik Mustafa, defensive back from Wake Forest, is going to fit in immediately. Zach Zinter uh, is going to be, hopefully, your mainstay left guard heading into the 2025 season. Jalen Coker, hopefully he can develop into kind of your big body, red zone threat type receiver at the X. And then Elijah Jones, one of my favorite sleepers in this class in round seven. So grade my mock for me, A, B, C, D, or F, let me know what you would think if this is what the Commander's Draft Hall looks like here in 2024. That'll be it for today's show, guys. But don't forget, we are going live tomorrow to break down and re live, react live to whoever the Commanders end up taking tomorrow. We're going to be covering it live if they trade up, all these different things. So make sure you click that subscribe button and don't miss a single moment of night one of the 2024 NFL Draft when it comes to the Washington Commanders by clicking that subscribe button right now.